It sure has been a busy couple of days for the Green Bay Packers at the start of free agency this offseason. Obviously, yesterday was just wild, opening up with cutting David Bakhtiari, signing Josh Jacobs, releasing Aaron Jones, then signing Xavier McKinney. Now, today, the Packers have re-signed one of their own, re-signing cornerback and all-pro returner, Keyshawn Nixon. This was a move that a lot of us expected, but also wanted. Now, I'll show you exactly the money on it, and it's a little bit confusing, and it looks like a decent bit, but at the same time, as I said in my previous video today, don't always overreact on the average per year. It's more so what the guarantees are, which we don't know yet, and how that looks at a cap standpoint. The Packers are bringing back their all-pro returner, signing Keyshawn Nixon back to a three-year, $18 million deal that can go to $19.2 million max, one of their priorities. So as it sits right now, that's $6 million average per year. And a lot of you might be going, that's a lot of money for a returner. And that's why it kind of seems like the Packers may not just see Keyshawn Nixon as a returner. Obviously, he started a lot of games in the slot last year. And I, for one, have been saying the Packers should not go into 2024 with just Keyshawn Nixon in the slot. Now, was he terrible last year? No. Was he great last year in the slot? Definitely not, right? I'd say he was about average to below average in terms of a slot cornerback in the NFL, but a very good slot cornerback in the NFL, it's very seldom to find that. Now, should the Packers still go out and draft a slot-specific cornerback like a Mike Sainer still or a Jerry and Jones? Yes, 100%. You always want to have competition in that room, but this $6 million per year APY, as it stands, like I said, wait for the guarantees, wait for the cap to come out, the exact legwork of the contract to really break this down, which will be on this channel along with all the other ones. So click subscribe if you do want to see that when that does come out. And it says $19.2 million max. So we can earn another $1.2 million in incentives. I'm sure that has to do with either interceptions or return yards slash touchdowns. But this is obviously a big re-signing for the Green Bay Packers. You know, without Keyshawn Nixon, that cornerback room is very light. And, and I don't look at him just as returner. I think he provides good cornerback depth, but I'm not necessarily sure I want him starting full time at nickel cornerback. I think he's a great depth cornerback can be a number four and there should like I said still be competition at that nickel spot which I'm sure the Packers will address in this upcoming draft the problem with Nixon last year I think was inconsistency and it was his first year full-time starting on a defense and in the nickel here you know bringing up his PFF stats overall his grade on the year was 60.0 that is exactly average when it comes to PFF um, his coverage grade, same thing, 60.4. Uh, where he wasn't the best was run defense and tackling, which you do kind of need out of a nickel cornerback, right? A 55.2 in run defense, a 49.1 in tackling. And you can see with the grades throughout this the last season, a lot of inconsistencies, like some games in the 40s. And then you have some games in the 70s, and there's no real correlation. It's just very random. Like he had a great game against New Orleans, Kansas City, uh, Minnesota and Dallas, but he also had awful games against Sam Fran, uh, New York, Tampa Bay, Carolina, Denver, and Chicago in week one. So there's more bad than there is good here. That's why I kind of have him as like average to slightly below average, but nonetheless, he's an excellent returner, probably the best in the NFL. And it's been a very, very long time since the Packers have had a returner like that. So it was definitely a priority to bring him back. Yes, I'm a little like, oh, wow, that's a lot of money, right? But again, let's wait for the guarantees. Let's wait for how the contract lays out to really then go and, I guess, scrutinize it. But overall, I'm happy with this resigning. I wanted the Packers to bring back Keyshawn Nixon. Now they just need to go complement that with a nice draft with a couple cornerbacks, maybe a Mike Sainer still and a Max Melton and really round out that cornerback room. But that does it for this video. Just a quick update, a quick re-signing by the Green Bay Packers. Like I said, there's a ton going on. I'm sure more will happen this week. And like I said, as the official contract for this comes out, as well as Xavier McKinney comes out, we already saw what the Josh Jacobs ones looks like. It's in my previous video. Um, I'll make a cap update once these all come out so I can get a better idea uh, with the real deals and what their cap charge will be for 2024 on what the Packers' current salary cap number is. But that about does it for this one. I appreciate you guys coming by. Please leave a like down below if you did enjoy the video. I'll catch you on the next one. And as always, Go Pack Go.